Only the CEO whisperer can deliver a conversation like you're about to see. Robert, take it away. It is doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everyone's trying to find out what's happening in the workplace of the future. And after a thousand CEOs, what I could say is, this is the one man from running about a $10 billion business, writing also this fabulous book on the workplace, what the workplace of the future is. And this ties exactly into the goal. So just talk about what the workplace of the future is going to be. Robert, let me start by thanking George and you. Uh, this is humbling indeed uh, to echo Howard's words. Uh, this is a privilege and uh, I'm fortunate to be here to share some ideas on a topic that I'm very passionate about. And that passion will come out, so you might have to excuse that passion. But the workplace has really changed. If you think about what the pandemic did with all its devastation that it caused, we're a, we're, we're a resilient species and we have emerged from the pandemic and in the shadows of the pandemic and the opportunities that are emerging from the pandemic and the lessons learned will really impact how we think about work, workplace, workspaces, and workers. And there are fundamental, significant tectonic shifts that are happening in each one of those. Uh, some of the things that I'll touch on and then we can dig into more details around is as we think about workplaces and work and the shift, uh, the idea of hybrid, the idea of technology, sustainability, responsibility. One of the things we did as JLL about two years ago is we said, in our purpose statement, we put in the better world. And we said, we want our domain and our responsibility to create a better world. And the better world has many implications. It's around the things we talked about, mental health, physical health, around sustainability, around diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, the way I group them is around work that is personalized, work that is responsible, and workspaces that are responsible and experiential. And we can unpeel those as we go along. Well, let's go exactly <clears throat> into those three. And w when, you, when you talk about something like sustainability, there's enormous impact with everything you're doing with the workplace. It's very true, very true. Um, you know, uh, from a sustainability standpoint, I'll start by leaps and bounds. We've come, I was at Davos in 2020 in February, just before uh, the pandemic hit. And even there, you could see CEOs across the globe, uh, in, it, it, was, it had multiplied over the last 12 months in terms of commitments around net zero, carbon neutral. One of the things that we're seeing is, while those commitments were made, the question that I, that I always ask when I'm with C-suites and, and colleagues is let's test and make sure that the roadmaps are implementable, that, that there are details around it that are getting the attention because there's so much going on. There's macroeconomic headwinds uh, that are clearly impacting us. A, a little statistics for you, Robert, and, and for the audience, 40% of carbon emissions, 40% of the planet's carbon emissions come from built environments. We live in them, we work in them, we shop in them, we travel to airports, 40% comes from that. That's our business, that's my business, to, to influence that. So if we can influence it in partnership with everyone, this is no longer a debate. This is something that has to be done, and more importantly, the commitment around sustainability is real, it's happening across the globe. So. Uh, we're on a good path, but there's, this is a tall hill, a mountain to climb, and then some. Let's talk about, you mentioned responsibility, and you mentioned um, personalization and the experiential. Give an example of what the workplace of the future will be, and we know in, in, in your studies that only 8% of people want to be solely at home. Right. And 42% want to be solely at work, and the rest is hybrid. But give an example of what the whole workplace of the future will be like. Yeah, so look at our lives, and that's a reflection of what work is. I'll start by saying work We're, used to be... I know what you're going to say. <laughs> it's a great line. Listen carefully, all of you watching in. Work used to be where you went. Work is no longer where you go. 
Work is what you do. There you go. Remember, big. Uh, that, come on, that's applause. <laughs> that is good. Work is what you do. Keep going. You are, you are too kind, but isn't it the reality? I grew up, my wife of 37 years is sitting there, and I would say, sweetie, I'm going to work, or she would say, I'm going to work. We don't go to work anymore. Hybrid is real. Flexibility is real. It's here. It's going to stay with us. The world has changed, and the implications of that in terms of equity, and I'll talk about equity because I'm really passionate about it, but I'm going to hold that thought, uh, on diversity, on inclusion, is, is phenomenal. It's just... Uh, it's life-changing for people around the globe. But let's start with personalization. You know, smartphones have trained us. Our lives are personalized. The I in the individual is more pronounced today, Robert, wouldn't you agree, than it has ever been. We want everything personalized. I don't want a space because I am in finance or HR or in supply chain. I want a space because it's Sanjay's space. And I want it customized to me. And, and that's want, the future. That is the future. I would say that's the present. There's capital commitments that organizations are ma making. The one big shift that's happened is the idea of uh, talent, attraction, retention. Uh, Kim's in the, in, in the audience, I think. And in terms of how do you retain, attract talent, it has to be personalized. Uh, going to responsibility, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, health. And health... You know, it's not just physical and mental health, but physical and mental wellness. Because the two are, there is a difference. And wellness, 43%, 43% in a survey by Gallup of people around the globe uh, that uh, the pandemic impacted their wellness, uh, their mental wellness. And this is impacting people. So, so this idea of health and wellness, diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, sustainability, all of that is real. There are five generations in our workplace. Five generations, never happened before. And they all have, each individual and each generation decides who to work for and where to stay based on that idea of responsibility. And, and then finally, experiential. It's all about my experience. When I go to work, when I go into a retail store, when I travel, what is my experience? Is it seamless? Is it frictionless? Is it productive? Can I, do I feel comfortable? Clean air, clean water. How much information do I have at my fingertips? All of this is the future of work. Yeah, on, on that inspirational note, I'm um, given that its time is up, I will give you one that you could answer one sentence on this. But this whole future of work, I, I know if you could give any one advice, because JLL is obviously, you know, it, it's been the most ethical company on for the past 15 years, all of these awards, you've done everything with DEI, sustainability, but on leadership and your advice to leaders on their workplace, what, what advice you've learned, and I wanna throw, give you a curve here. So I know you love like trekking the Himalayas, but something you love even more than that and lessons you've learned from is your two daughters in the audience right there. What lesson have you learned from them that ties into leadership of the future and where the workplace is going to be? You know, I'll center it around equity. One of the things that's happened is equity has a new definition on the planet today. Equity is about access, about aspiration and achievement. For the longest time around the globe, people, the last 20 years, technology has made everything accessible to people in parts of the world that couldn't touch and feel and they couldn't have let alone access, they couldn't have an aspiration, they couldn't imagine, they couldn't dream, because all they saw was the slums around them. So for CEOs, for individuals, for leaders, you know, how do we take that and move it to achievement? And that's going to come from passion. And by the way, the new generation, Natasha and Shivani, my daughters, one's a public health professional, one's an attorney, both very socially active, responsible kids. But this is across the board. How do we harness that so equity manifests itself in our future generations in the world. There you have it. Well done.